Hey, welcome back YouTube. Thanks for watching Digging Deep. On uh, today's video, we're going to be doing the upgrade and installation of a lithium iron phosphate converter charger and swapping out the lead acid stock charger on this travel trailer. Here we have a new converter. We are going to be swapping out the old or the standard converter from the um, coachman here and putting in the Progressive Dynamics model PDN130L. Um, this is, model was made for uh, charging the lithium batteries. Um, it's got an out point, uh, output of 14.6. So if you, you can see here, this is about your standard setup here um, on travel trailers. And we are going to be alleviating this and we are going to be pulling these wires back into the camper and coming up into the compartment and hooking up to our battle board so we can charge off our new uh, converter we're going to be installing. This is basically the house battery that comes uh, on it, it's a heavy duty bat. It's a heavy duty battery, but it just doesn't last through the night running the furnace and stuff. And um, basically, I'm going to alleviate this and throw these leads in to charge the Battleborn batteries off the 30 amp compressive, uh, progressive dynamics uh, lithium profile charger. So we took the positive and negative leads that were going to the battery, which uh, was running through the wire loom to go up this way into the battery and we took those and went up into our new battery house compartment area with the battle borns up right into that area there now I do have that wire loom I'd like to come back and put this back on and and zip tie this up a little better okay everybody so we're gonna jump into preparing this Converter out, um, which we can already see down here. Um, all my breakers are off now. I will have to be very mindful and careful because I have 12 volt live wire feeding back here right now. Um, I should have some type of disconnect, but I don't, and I'm just going to have to um, play it safe. So I removed these two bracket screws here and here. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. So here's your um, three legs coming up to uh, your converter unit. Hot, neutral. Obviously you can see where that ties in there. I'm going to pull this out very carefully. So if you look closely here, we have our negative lead and, and our positive lead here, feeding your distribution panel up here. Um, so again, I will stress that you should probably disconnect your 12 volt battery source before doing any of this. Um, but I'm gonna be doing the work on this side of the panel and I'm gonna be very careful on uh, my uh, cutting the wires and uh, just making sure I don't have any dead shorts here because uh, that might ruin your night. But if you look over here, we have our, uh, our side that will feed the side to the converter breaker. And uh, anybody that knows uh, electrical, this is hot. This is your neutral and this is your ground um, going up to your converter breaker. So basically we have we have the uh, old unit removed. I didn't stub them too close to where if I wanted to hook it back up I could. Yeah, I should have left a little bit more water there. Um, and then I just cut those off there. Um, but it could uh, be hooked right back up essentially. And for starters, it's not going to fit. <laughs> so we're gonna figure a way out to to get this in here um, and this is how my whole night's been with this project but um, 
we're either going to put it over here and extend these two wires here. I tape this off so we don't uh, we don't short anything out. You don't want to short anything out here on the 12 volt side of things or to feeding this panel here. But uh, we're going to figure something out, and I'll be right back. Oh, we got our panel back in. Um, I don't know how well we can see this, um, but. There's how I chose to do the wires. Uh, it's what I, I figured out. I got some lugs on the negative and positive there, uh, which branch through. One over to there, to the converter. And here I just took my wire nuts and electric, electrical taped them up. Um, a lot of vibration, so you definitely don't want them coming off and shorting out. And it's just good to do anyway. Um, and that sloppiness of these tails is what uh, an old electrician taught me how to do back in the days what we call a courtesy tail but anyhow um, I checked the voltage uh, it's putting out the charge we want it to um, so uh, I'll give everybody an update on uh, how this works this is the 30 amp version so uh, we're actually uh, throwing a charge off of shore power right now to the Battleborn batteries. Um, so we're going to button uh, some things up here and I'll let you know how everything uh, is working. Okay, back again here this morning. Uh, finished about 10 o'clock last night. Um, so we went through the night and we will bring up smart shunt the Victron smart shunt here this is the 500 amp model if I didn't state that already we're at 14.42 so we are 100% charged um, so I'm sure it's at like a float charge right now I don't know if this uh, converter is just a constant 14.6 and I gotta rely on the battery BMS or not but anyhow once through the night uh, it did its job. I'm sure it's been charged up at 100% um, for a few hours now. Probably didn't. So I wanted to throw this little clip in here. So feeding out of the 12 volt distribution panel is like a 12 gauge wire to a junction box where the junction box ties into where you can hook up to your vehicle and get a charge off the 12 volt system on your vehicle. However, the 8-gauge eight or eight gauge wire from the junction box to the batteries is fine, but the feed up to that is only like a 12-gauge wire. So what I'm going to be doing is feeding from the distribution panel a dedicated 8-gauge uh, stranded wire. Um, I noticed when I hit my slide at times without having the converter breaker on, uh, it lags a little bit. So I'm hoping this will alleviate the struggle. But other than that, everything worked out great. So just double check your wire size from your uh, 12 volt distribution panel to your battery. Uh, mine went into a junction box, which I later figured out was smaller being fed up to that and came out of the junction box into the battery with a uh, eight gauge wire, but being fed to the junction box was a smaller wire, which didn't make much sense but uh, I will be putting a larger wire all the way back to the batteries, alleviating the charging system from the vehicle since I have solar and pretty much running a dedicated eight gauge wire all the way to my batteries. Okay, YouTubers, hey, thanks for watching Digging Deep. Hit that subscribe button, uh, like or dislike, drop a comment below, and stay tuned for more videos to come. Again, thanks for watching.